Good evening and welcome to Oasis. My name is Deanna and I'm a member here at St. Luke's. Um, I listen to a lot of 102.5 uh, in my car. That's the local radio station that plays contemporary Christian music. And on Monday, I was in my car going to work, and um, the DJ in between songs said, um, here's a prayer for today. Lord, let me be first. And she waited just long enough after that that I had to wonder if I'd misunderstood what she said. But then she continued and she said, Lord, let me be first to be kind, first to listen, first to smile, first to pray, first to reach out, first to volunteer, first to forgive, and first to show love. Turned out to be a pretty great prayer. In the big and the small ways, I hope that we can all, in our own lives, be the first to shine the light of Jesus into the world. Welcome to Oasis, no matter who you are or where you come from, whether you're here in person, joining us online, you are welcome here. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Holy Spirit equips the church with a variety of gifts. Grant that we may use them to bear witness to Christ in our lives that are built on faith and love. Make us ready to live the gospel and eager to do your will, so that we may share with all your church in the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So welcome again to everyone who's able to be here in person. We welcome everybody who's watching online. Uh, we are in the middle of our series on gifts and engagement, finding our gifts, discovering our gifts. What does that look like? What does that mean? How do we use those gifts um, in, our, in our regular lives, in our spiritual lives? And we're lucky enough to have several members of St. Luke's uh, talk to us about how they discovered their gifts and how God led them to use them, those gifts, here and their experience with that. So tonight we talked to Tom Kermgard. Thank you so much for being here, Tom. Welcome. Thank you. Very glad to be here. And tell us a little bit, um, give us a little history. Um, tell us who you are, where you live, what keeps you busy during the day, um, who's in your family, and how long you've been a member here. All right. Well, I will uh, start with family. That's most important to me. So um, my wife is Lisa. I've been married 29 years. Uh, it's a great institution. I recommend it. Highly recommend it. Uh, I have a, a daughter, uh, Lindsay, who is 26 years old, uh, went to UW-Madison, and she is now a school teacher in Denver, Colorado. And I'm very happy to report the last one. Ben is 23. Uh, graduated from UW Lacrosse in December and finished his student teaching last Friday, and is now about to venture out into the uh, working world. So it's uh, we got two of them through college. We're feeling pretty good Milestone, about that. Yeah, yeah. We live in the uh, west side of Madison. We're in Parkwood Hills, uh, which is a neighborhood right behind Memorial High School. So uh, just two miles away from St. Luke's, and uh, this has been our church home for the last seven years. Whoa! What do I do during the day? Yeah. Right. Um, I have been, for 30 years, I have been a uh, video professional. So I've been an executive producer, uh, producing uh, films, co corporate videos, uh, TV commercials, uh, documentaries for the past 30 years. And I do that in town here for uh, a company called Shine United, and our video production uh, team is called Kingdom Filmworks. A little bit of trivia. You actually put together some um, videos I know for St. Luke several years ago. We were reversed. You were mm -hmm. interviewing me. Um, so I, I like this seat better, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, that, that is actually um, when I first started at St. Luke's, uh, Pastor Roger uh, had found out uh, that I was in the video production 
business. And uh, literally, uh, I remember him between services tracking me down on, on Herbert Avenue, running out between the 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock service to track me down on the street and said, I've got a great opportunity for you. Uh, how would you like to be part of the stewardship committee? And I said, no. And, he, and then uh, he said, but it's just making videos for the stewardship committee. And I said, oh, that sounds great. I'd be glad to, glad to help out if, if I can drive the creative and the content and, and offer some suggestions. Um, and he was more than happy to hear that. And that was, that was kind of the, be, the beginning of what I felt was like real involvement here at St. Luke's. It was kind of that, that first step of, oh, I'm not just someone that, that sits here. I'm someone that is now a part of the fabric. And uh, I really appreciated Roger um, making that invitation. And tell us how that started for you. Give us what fabric, what church did you start your fabric, your weaving in? Yeah. Um, give us a little bit of history about your faith life and your faith background. Yeah, I, you know, I was really lucky. I grew up, I grew up uh, in Illinois. Uh, well, growing up in Illinois was not the lucky part. Growing up in the church that I grew up in is what was lucky. It was Zion Lutheran Church. And I was, I was the fourth generation of family members that had gone to this church. It was, um, it was a, a very traditional Swedish uh, ELCA church. And uh, my brother and I had so many great experiences there. Uh, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, we all went there. Uh, very vibrant youth group. So uh, picture, a, picture a downtown church much you know much like this that owned just picture this church if it owned the house directly across the street and that's what we had we had a place right across the street called the friendship house and that was the youth group's house that was once you made it to middle school middle school and high school that was your house that was your that's where we had our sunday school classes we had all of our youth events it, it was just kind of a magical just a magical place uh, we had our, our youth trips our, our uh, missionary trips and Without that experience, uh, I would not be who I am today without that. I mean, carrying Zion Lutheran Church with me is just part of my daily life. And God gives us all, he makes us all unique and gives us all um, different things that make us unique. What do you identify as being uniquely Tom? What are some of, what are some of your gifts, do you think? Yeah. I, I was that kid that would drive his parents crazy um, with stories. I, I never, I never was quiet. I was never still. I was always telling a story or putting on a, a play or doing something at home. Just, just um, my parents were great sports about it. But I, I did, I did like to like when the microphone's in my hand. I'm always very happy. I like that. I like to tell stories. Um, so for me, I was a radio TV film major in college because I knew I wanted to go into a business that allowed me to, uh, to communicate with other people and tell stories and shape messages. And I, I feel that video and film is, is the most effective medium that there is in terms of getting a message across. And I, I knew early on that that was what I was going uh, to spend my working life doing. I didn't know what what avenue within that industry, you know, whether I was going to go to California or, uh, or work corporate side, but I knew I was going to do something in the video uh, world. So I'd love to tell stories. And anytime I can use that skill uh, within in video production to help tell a story, um, I love doing that. So that, that's just, that's kind of my unique skill is storytelling through a very specific medium. And how did the Holy Spirit sort of nudge you to share that? And you, you mentioned the story with Pastor Roger and the stewardship videos. How else do you feel like you've been nudged by the Holy Spirit to share those? Was that a difficult thing for you to find? Was it easy? What was that, what was that like for you? Yeah, you know, it, 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 it was a little bit difficult. And it was easy and difficult at the same time, if that makes sense, that, um, you, know, once I, you know, once I found an outlet to kind of share some of those skills, uh, it was very easy, and there was lots of ways to use those. But it was it was a little hard to uh, it, it was a little hard to take the skills in video production and say how do, how do I make the world a better place with these? Um, but I, I've been very fortunate over the 30 year career 
to do a lot of work, not, not just uh, at places like St. Luke's or Zion Lutheran Church, it's um, in the community. Uh, I like to, my company and me personally, we like to do a certain amount of work where we give back to the community. We, we, try, to, we try to do work that will uh, be philanthropic in nature. Uh, uh, I'm doing a series of videos right now uh, about conservation in America, and that's really important to me that, that it's not, I'm not just doing work that's strictly for commerce. I'm doing work that I think will inspire people to take action and make the world a, a better place. Now, I can't do that. I mean, I can't do that 40 or 50 hours a week, but I like to at least know that a good portion of my week is moving in that direction. And how does, you mentioned this a little bit about inspiring people. Um, in sharing those gifts, how has that helped you understand sort of God's mission mission for you, and how has sharing them enriched your faith story? Years from now, when you are asked to tell your faith story again, how will those sharing those gifts play a role? Yeah, they, I, real, I guess that's a, a simple one for me, is that my dad would always, he would, pair, he would say it in different ways, but it was a really, it, was, it stuck with me. It was, um, we're all on this planet to, to help other people. That, that's our mission, and why we were put here is to serve others. And that you should never do that begrudgingly. You should always do it joyously. And no matter what you're doing, my dad was an engineer, and I don't, I don't know, he was an, a, an engineer in the aviation industry, so I don't, I don't know uh, where that necessarily fit into what, what he was saying. But in his free time, my dad never did something, did anything that wasn't for the benefit of others. He would always put himself second, third, fourth, fifth. Um, and that was a good. That was a great inspiration for me. And um, and any time my brother and I would kind of whine about having to do something, or ah, I don't, that doesn't sound like fun. I don't want to do that. Uh, you know, he's always like, you know, if you're not willing to do that, then what the heck are you here for? This this is this is what you're here for today. Um, you you need to give of yourself to others, and that always resonated with me. So I try I try to do that. Uh, just in my daily life, and I try to do that in my professional life. He was a good role model, it sounds like. Yeah, he was pretty good. He was a good guy. <laughs> he was a good guy. So as we close, um, two questions. One, um, if there are people out there listening out here right now who are like, you know what, I, I'd like to be involved. I don't really know how. I don't, I'm not qualified. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not that good. I'm not that gifted. What advice or what, what would you say to people who are sort of on the verge of, of making St. Luke's their home in a, in a more meaningful way? Yeah, I, my, my advice would be just to do it and, and don't, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, gifts, great and small. Uh, you don't have to be talented. You don't have to be the best singer in the world. You don't have to be the most skilled at, at, at whatever. Uh, you know, the, you find a role in, in just giving of yourself uh, is is good enough. And you'll find that you have greater talents that you would ever imagine. And when you start to give, then you get back tenfold. And that just that, that act of getting involved makes you feel so connected. And once you become part of that whole tapestry that is St. Luke's, then it's truly your home. And you're, there, there's no gift uh, of time or talent that's too small. It's not insignificant. Just do it. You're so, you'd be so welcomed. So that, that would be my advice is um, if you're on the sidelines, please um, do us all a favor and come, come get in the game. Well, and I love what you said, too, about there, there's no gift too small, and especially when you combine it with other gifts, mm -hmm. then it, it, becomes, it becomes something huge. Mm -hmm. um, so the last question um, that I love to ask people, uh, can your answer can be f from profound to silly. What do you know for sure, Tom Kermagard? <laughs> I, do, I do know that if I were the special teams coach of the Green Bay Packers, <laughs> we would be in the next round of the playoffs. Uh, I can guarantee that. Um, yes, um, but I, I think if I were to give a serious answer is, uh, and if I could just tell one more story from my youth, Please do. Um, is, and I go back to a lot of the same thing, is that I firmly believe that you don't get much without giving. And 
in sixth grade, uh, just picture yourself, anybody in the room, just picture yourself when you're in sixth grade, it's winter break, you're going home, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's present time, it's Christmas time, it's the greatest time, and you know, it's uh, just, I, I think of it, it's so great. Uh, and I had a sixth grade teacher named Mrs. Patch, and she was wonderful, and, and she asked us, uh, what we're the most excited about for break and we all you know it was presents You know, we're gonna get mountains of presents at Christmas time and she said, okay, cool uh, Your assignment when you come back is you're gonna write a paper on what was the greatest gift you gave this Christmas and We were like what and she was like no seriously the joy of Christmas isn't opening that mountain of presents. The, the joy is in giving something to someone. It could be time. It could be, you know, it could be spending time with your great-grandmother. It could, it, who knows what it could be. What's the greatest gift that you gave this holiday season? And we were like, okay, well, yeah, whatever. Let's go open those presents. And, it, and, it, and certainly I, I didn't, it didn't resonate with me whatsoever at that time but the seventh grade Tom Kermgaard one year later was really thought about that what am I going to give what am I going to give this Christmas what am I going to give this holiday and I started to realize that I really I really didn't care what was in that stack of presents as much as I cared about what seeing my mother's eyes light up or my sister's eyes light up you know and, and I started to then apply that to all aspects of my life that I, I and to this day, I, I, I care very little about what I receive, but I care greatly about what I give. And I've imparted that, uh, my wife and I have imparted that same message to our children. And I, they're, my, my kids, I'm very proud to say, are just wonderful role models in terms of um, what they give back to the community, what they give to their friends, what they give to their family, the way, I mean, they give me hope for the future, just the way they live their lives. And I think it's just that simple advice of that at some point it clicked with them that it's not about giving, or not about receiving, it's about giving. And so that, that's what I know for sure is that you just don't get much without giving uh, and give joyously. I love that, and I love that you, that you're. What a beautiful testament to your. You've said a lot of nice things about your dad, your kids. You've had a lot of um, really special people in your life. Thank you so much for yeah. for your time and and for your words today. Yeah. Well, I, thank, thanks so much. This was great. Thanks for having me. Thank you.